know, I had some guy come knocking on the door one time, and they said, we want to talk to you about the kingdom, you know. They were these, you know, one of who they were. <laughs> and I said, well, come on in. It's in the Bible 1169 times. So I started preaching to them. They go, we come here to tell you about the kingdom, you know. <laughs> they, uh, you know, we're, we're a blessed people because in this hour, God's raising people up that are going to uh, have a greater understanding of the word. I like teaching biblical interpretation a lot because it's something that we should have been taught how to read the Bible and how to enjoy the Bible, not this is what we believe because that threw a curveball to a whole lot of people in the faith. I, I wrote a couple of notes here uh, where I want to begin. You know, <laughs> let, me, let me get my thought back here. Let, let me start in John 3, 2. Let me start here in this, in this uh, Amplified Bible. John chapter 3, in verse 2, we see something here that's very powerful. And I know, you know, I was listening to a lady teach here a while back, maybe it's been a year ago or so, but she said something that really struck a nerve in me. But, you know, in the 1800s, we, we've been seeing the Spirit of God get poured out. Why is everybody, every time, uh, let me use John Wesley in 1730, his teaching on the circumcision of the Spirit, how our God felt. Miracles are happening, like a Zeus Street move of God. You know that he wasn't allowed in any church in America or England? He would meet in graveyards and out in the woods and wherever. And he's the one that actually set up uh, healing clinics. But I'll leave that alone. I don't want to move into that too far. But in the Azusa Street, and then people came from all over the world to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What were they teaching there? The baptism of the Holy Spirit was the evidence of speaking in tongues. That was the number one message in the Azusa Street. Plus, they treated the Word with great respect. That's something I don't see. People don't criminal at the Word of God anymore. It's a, you know, it's a... We've been taught with no respect to the word. I'll leave that alone. I don't want to dabble there too long. John, Gospel of John 3, 2 in the Amplified Bible, it says, When Jesus came at night, and he said to him, Who came to Jesus at night? <laughs> Nicodemus. And he said to him, Rabbi, we know that, that are, and are certain that you have come from God. As a teacher, and for no one can do these signs, these wonder, wonder works, these miracles, and produce the proofs that you do unless God is with you. Now we know in Ephesians 4, 6, God is in you all, with you all, and through you all. Isn't that right? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I just want to throw some little nuggets out there for you. So God is in everybody here. We just recognize that, right? We'll leave that alone. If he's not, we'll just, we can get you set up with that. 3, 3, Jesus answered him, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a person is born again anew from above, see, this is that's the way that reads in the Greek, from above, he cannot ever see, know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom of God. Now, this is kind of powerful because the kingdom of God is something we can't see. I'll prove that to you. When we get over here to Luke 17, 20, 21, the kingdom of God is what? Within you. Where is God? He's in you all, with you all, and through you all. We'll start seeing some things tied together here. But now this kingdom... <laughs> I'll, I'll move, I'll explain about it more as we go. So Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb again and be born? See, this is something spiritual. Jesus is talking about spiritual things to him. Jesus answered, verse 5, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a man is born of water and even of, spirit, of the Spirit, he cannot ever enter the kingdom of God. Now, you, this is a figure of speech. There's 315 different figures of speech in the Bible. Most people don't even know figures of speech even exist. A lot of rabbis don't even know that. But this is the figure of speech. It's called hendites. It's two things being spoken, meaning one thing. It's, there's a lot of many ands and many buts, and there's a lot of different figures of speech. But when these figures of speech come up, they're like flashing red lights. When Jesus says, verily, verily, he's like, man, listen up and pay attention, right? And so I'm not here to teach on figures of speech and biblical interpretation. I used to teach on that a lot many years ago. But it just Greek to people. But what he's talking about here, you've got to be born again of what? Spiritual water. Spiritual water. And see, there's really, he's coming back for a church that's washed by what? The waters of the Word. Okay? I mean, we, I'm not here to teach on all that and how that works, but there's really no spiritual, natural water in, in this new, new covenant. I'll leave that alone. Jesus said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture says, said, out of his belly shall full rivers of living water. 
that spake he of the Spirit, not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So what is born, verse 6, what is born from the flesh is flesh, of the physical is physical, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not, be not surprised and admonished by me telling you, you must all be born anew, how is that, from above. You know, James 1 and 17, it says, every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above. There's something radical getting ready to happen, and maybe I'll just share this with you. But what happens, in the, if you study the book of Revelation, there's a supernatural anointing that comes up from the abyss. When Jesus says over here, he tells the Pharisees over there, he says, I am from above, and you are from below. Well, think about that. Now, there's something getting ready to happen that's going to be supernatural upon this planet. There's going to be an unprecedented anointing that's going to come up on God's people. The people really love God, right? I'm talking, I'm telling you the truth. I'm just boiling things out in a while. I wasn't planning on going this far with a lot of this. We have to under, understand that when Abraham looked up, he said, So shall I see me. And he saw the stars, right? Innumerable. And he said, Look down at the sand. Well, there's an, there's an earthly sea and there's a heavenly sea. I'm going to throw this out really nice for you. And begin to realize that's why you're not using that Hebrews 3 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of your confession, Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. I'm trying to make heavenly citizens out of you here today. Our, our homeland is in heaven. Isn't that right? Come on, I'm from above. I'm not from below. You know, that's what Deuteronomy 28 says, right? He made us the head, not the tail. We're above only. We shall not be beneath. If those scriptures speak to you, then they really should. You see, because I'm seated in heavenly places. Where is that? With Christ Jesus. Jesus over and over again. John 14, John 12, John 17. That you can be with me where I am. Come on. Okay, I'll leave that alone. That's another teaching. And it's entire. Come on. But see, well, what does it say in Romans 8? It says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So I found when I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I began to read this Bible by the Spirit of God. Then God was speaking to me spiritually. The Word was rhema. It was speaking to me. And, and I began to realize biblical interpretation and all this other stuff. And every, when you begin to apply the, the Bible, it will take you into the realm of the Spirit. That's just exactly where you're going to end up. Now, John 3 27, he says this. I'm just going to hit you with one more. There's several of these. But it says, John answered, a man can receive nothing. He can claim nothing. He can take unto himself nothing except it has been granted to him from heaven. A man must be content to receive the gift which is given him from heaven. There is no other source. Where did Paul the Apostle get his ordination papers? <laughs> Hello. I'm just trying to help you out. And I'm not going to move into any more of that. I want to go to 2 Peter 1.11. And... Uh, in 2 Peter, verse 111, we're going to talk here about the kingdom today. And uh, we see something here that's pretty powerful. It says here, let me let me start in uh, oh, verse 10. You read the you read the context above this because if we lack these things, right? Now it says, therefore, brethren, even be more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Now he's talking about the things that are above this context here. Now, everybody here has a purpose and a call. Right? We should give diligence to make our calling and election sure. You see, I wandered around as a as a religious person. I'll say that nicely. And so I was, you know, why am I here on earth? You know, it's Christmas again, my birthday again, but you know, it just kept rolling around. But, I go out and try to talk to God, and you know, I mean, why am I here? There's got to be a purpose in our life, right? Yeah. And then I opened up the book of Ephesians after I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when he said there in Ephesians 1, 17, and I urge you to pray this. There's other scriptures you can pray, but in 18, and it says, And the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, we give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Isn't that right? Revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance among the saints? 
Come on, what is the exceeding greatness of this power to us who believe according to the work of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and so on and so forth. But that's a lot of power. But why, does, why are so many Christians miserable? Why do so many people fall away <laughs> from Christianity? It's because they don't know their purpose. They don't know their call. I'm trying to help you out. There's a lot of scripture. I got a, we did a pamphlet on this many buku years ago. We've got all kinds of pamphlets that we've written in syllabuses and so on and so forth. What to help people get into a fellowship and a union with God. When you find your purpose and call, you it'll be a glorious thing for you. People that will be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and what? Perfect will of God. I want to be in the perfect will of God. I mean, that's where we need to be. Now, oh, I didn't get to verse 11. <laughs> it says, For so an, ent an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly. Where's this entrance into what? <laughs> supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's an entrance into this kingdom. Come on, I was taught, well, the kingdom had passed away. It didn't exist anymore. <clears throat> you know, all kinds of stuff. But see, God never wanted this church age that we're in. I don't know how we ended up in this thing. The whole idea, I mean, all of it really, was to bring us into this kingdom. That's the way I see this. Colossians 1 13. He says this. There's so many ways to teach this, but this is the way the Holy Spirit has given, given it to me to bring it forth tonight, all right? Now let me read you 12. 1 and 12 in Colossians, it says, Give thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Aren't you glad that He made you accepted in the blood? Yeah. He's qualified everybody here. Not because of anything we've done, because of what Jesus Christ did. Isn't that right? Yeah. Come on, let's get this right. Yeah. And so, it says, Be partakers of, of the inheritance of the saints in the light. You know, 1 John 1, 7 says, If you walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Yeah. What an amazing people are walking in the light. They can have fellowship with anybody. Come on. Hello. Yeah. I can even love my enemies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in the light. Now, why I came here is this verse 13. He has, has, has already done it, delivered us from the power of darkness, and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. That's pretty good. Isn't it? That's our, now, all these kingdoms, I, I wrote this down before, and I don't want to talk about it much, and I refuse to write it down tonight and talk about it. but. The idea is there's different spheres. There's the kingdom of His dear Son, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of the, the everlasting Father. I mean, these are those are all different dimensions of God. I believe that we're on the outer court, the inner court, the holy, the holy. Right? Think about it. <laughs> I am the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, all those things are talking, bring us in. Some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred. Oh, well, my dad had a sign corner of miracle ministry, but he stood in that middle court. He used to tell me all the time, you've gone too far with all this. I go, I haven't gone far enough. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a third court guy. You know, Paul's caught up to the third heaven, isn't that right? If we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1 and 21 says, far above all principality and power and might, and named in his name, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. And he's given him to be the head of the church, right? The fullest of him that what? Fill it all in all. Fill it all in all. That's pretty good. We got the greatest tool in the world, and that's the Holy Spirit. I mean, if people just tap into this Holy Spirit and begin to allow Him to be your teacher, hello. Come on. I mean, we we wouldn't be in this place that I know God's got people that are going to move into that room. We just did a funeral right before we left. We didn't have time to go. This lady, I used to travel with a group called the No Limits, and we our job, my job, was to teach on the supernatural realm, and. Uh, uh, we were in some city, I don't know where, but this lady, I met this lady. Well, she I didn't meet her there, but I ended up meeting her eventually. She moved over to where we lived and became a part of our deal. She was having third dimension uh, experiences with the Holy Spirit. She was being caught up to the third heaven like Paul, hearing unexpressible words. Come on, Jude 20 says, Rise like an edifice higher and higher, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the Amplified Bible. So she was praying in the Holy Spirit, having these third dimension thing. I was with a, book, a, a group of people out here years ago and uh, they were having the same. A lady wrote three books on it. Three little pamphlets on it. But anyway, 
Uh, so she realized when I was teaching that she wasn't really crazy, but guess what her church did? When she was sharing these experiences, they had her locked up in a sane asylum. Oh, Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, i got to tell you this little bit of story because I shared it at her when I was there at the funeral. This was just a week ago. Today, probably, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, that, uh, <laughs> that I lost my train there just for a second. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Yeah, thank you. I got my instructor back here. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, her doctor was a foreigner that had her locked in the same asylum. Her husband's going, well, let my wife go. She's not crazy. And so she looked at this doctor and foreigner began to talk to him in tongues in a foreign language. And it was his language. And he said, come back here, come back here. Let me, I'm signing these papers. And I'm letting your wife out of here right now. And he goes, didn't you hear what he, she said? He goes, I didn't understand a word what she was saying. She, she told me I was going to hell if I didn't repent. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the tongue of men and of angels, isn't that wonderful? But see, Paul said, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than you all, right? First Corinthians 14, 18. So we've got to realize that there's something to this praying in the spirit. We, I've written all kinds of stuff on that. now. I got a little carried away, but it does deal with what I'm talking about, the kingdom, all right? We're going to see this. And I know that my experiences praying in the Spirit, I couldn't figure out why my Pentecostal brothers weren't having any experiences like I were because they weren't forever in their, in their prayer life. They weren't forever to use the tools that they had. And I, I mean, I can tell you lots of stories, and if it worked for me, it'll work for anybody. That's just the way I look at it. Yeah. I'm just a simple guy. I just thought it was amazing that I could speak in this foreign language. Luke 1 and 31, a little concrete for you here that this kingdom does exist. It's never been passed away. Let me just prove that to you for people that have been raised under that same thing that I've been raised under. Luke 1 and 31, it says, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Back to Acts 15, 16, right? And it says, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. No end. No end. Now see, God, God came to establish. I'm going to expound on this a little further down the road. Isaiah 9 and verse 7 declares the same thing to us again. Isaiah 9 and verse 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this oh this is pretty powerful I mean there's something that we have that's available to us you know there's scriptures in Hebrews 11.40 I read through all of Hebrews 11 and by the wall but faith the wall the Jericho fell I mean all these marvelous things happened and then verse 40 it says God has provided some better thing for us yeah. we've got something better than what everybody in Hebrews 11 had yeah. hello oh my. I'm a treasure hunter <laughs> I'm going to start digging here right? I'm going to find this thing hey, Daniel 2 and 44 yeah. go over to Daniel I'm just going to hit a couple of these. It's all the way through Daniel. We see here in Daniel 2 and 44, it says this. It says, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. The first scripture that comes to be is Revelation 11, 15 and says, The kingdoms of this world are the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. Yeah. You are His Christ. Mm -hmm. His anointing. That's pretty good. That's a good word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I've been reading the book of Revelation for 40 years, dissecting it, tearing it apart, upside down. But I just don't see a doomsday in there. <laughs> <laughs> he put it in our heart to make war with the whore and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Uh, let's see, let me get over there. I think it's 1820 of Revelation. Rejoice over her, my holy apostles and prophets, because God has avenged you upon her. Yeah, come on. Well, wait a minute. I could go on. I told you last night, hurt not those that have the seal of God in their forehead. 
Hello. I mean, this is this is real stuff to me. I mean, I, I find it really, really good. 725. Let's just do this, and I'll jump out of here. There's all kinds of them, but I don't want to get over. I want to get us over to the new covenant. Oh, let me just pick up at 26. 726. It says, "But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume it and destroy it forever." Then the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints. The saints. Mm. Hello. Of the Most High, and His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. That's a pretty good word, isn't it? Yeah. You see, and somebody shared a little bit of this tonight. I think I heard it here tonight. Sometimes I, I get opened into heaven there and I hear other things, but... <laughs> Matthew 6, he said, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Isn't that right? He's telling his disciples how to pray. He says, it's your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. How? As we forgive those who trespass against us, right? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's a powerful prayer for people. Right? For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever. Jesus prayed for that kingdom to come to earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, we're we've been in a corrupt, we've got a really corrupt society today. <laughs> we, our government's all the way through this Bible, they've all been corrupt. <laughs> right? If, you know, there's well, I don't want to move over into that realm. I'll just stay right here. Let's go to <laughs> Matthew 3. I want to keep this short as I can, and as good as I can, as meaty as I can for you. The in 3, verse 1, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know that word repent means change your mind, right? Yep. Change your actions. Go another way. That's why I think a lot of times people won't put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. That's why, you know, we're supposed to renew our mind constantly be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4 and 23. The other one before that was Colossians 3.10. I forgot I got note keepers here. And so the idea of that is so that I need to renew my mind. I'm in a new kingdom. There's new laws. There's new ways of doing things. Yeah, come on. You know, I, I remember one time I, I first locked myself up reading the Bible for years and I asked God, man, everything in my life just changed. It was like everything I touched turned to gold. And I mean, before that, everything I touched turned to crap, you know? <laughs> okay, I go, everything I touch turns to crap. Come on up here, let me pray for you. <laughs> I'm being funny. <laughs> but anyway, it's true. I said, God, why, why is this happening in my life like this? He goes, because you're seeking first my kingdom. Matthew 6 and 33. I didn't have no revelation of that, what, of what I was doing. But see, I, my thinking began to change. I began to act. My friends would go, you're not the same guy that you used to be. Come on. But I still look the same. You know, I still had a beard and shaggy hair. And they go, you're not the same guy. And I said, well, I killed that guy. Yep. They said, you did? I go, yeah, through the word of God. Yeah. I'm mortified. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> True story, that's what I would tell them, you know. I love that explanation. <laughs> they didn't freak out. And I go, well, now if I could reach in my pocket and give you a pill, would you eat it? He go, yeah. I go, I got something to get you way higher than that. You see, I'm on the most high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not just going any high. So anyway, <laughs> I'm dabbling here, better quit. So, <laughs> 4 and 17. He says this. Let me just hit a few of these. We'll get into the crutch of the biscuit here. From that time, Jesus began to preach it and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's right. Now, that's pretty good. So now we've got John the forerunner. He's saying, Hey, here's the kingdom coming, right? The kingdom's on its way. I'd like to teach on Elijah and show you that. You know, he said, I can't go into Elijah. Elijah was the forerunner of the kingdom, right? Yeah. I believe here 50 years ago, we had Elijah ministries all over this country. Why? Because God's proclaiming, here comes the kingdom again. I mean, it's always been available. It's always been open. But people didn't know how to get into it. Yeah. He said, oh, you Pharisees, you scribes, you shut up the kingdom. Yeah. You keep people from getting into this thing. Isn't that right? Yeah. I'm just throwing in a couple of those other 1169 scriptures I'm not going to be able to use. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let, let me read you verse 23. 
And then Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel. That's the good news of the kingdom. And healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Yeah. Let me go to Matthew 11. Let's go to 11. Let me go to 11, 11. Just laying foundation here for where we need to go. Surely I say to you, Matthew 11, 11, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Yeah. John never got to be in the kingdom. He was a forerunner. He was just proclaiming, here it comes. Yeah. That everybody here is greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. Woohoo. I mean, that's what, that's, you know, that's what it says, isn't it? I mean, right. you know, and there was never risen a prophet greater than John. Verse 12, it says, And from the days, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and what happens? The violent take it by force. Yeah. And it goes on to talk about Elijah there, but now think about this. You know, I studied this. I broke this down. They press into it with all they got. You know, it's like I shared before, there's opposition to keep you from coming into this kingdom. But there's also a lot of things that God wants to change in our life. He wants to get us out so he can come in. Right? He wants to be president. He's tired of taking up president. He wants to be president now. Right? <laughs> I don't want to be resident. I want to be president of your life. I'm trying to make that clear. Most people don't want to take, lay down their life and take up the very life of Christ. It blesses me here that so many people are selling out for the sake of the gospel. Has there ever been a time... I had a lot of my mentors told me, Charles, don't ever leave America. We need to be evangelized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to be taught. Lester Summer always would beat me in the head with the Bible all the time. You need to teach. You need to teach. You need to teach. I don't want to teach. I didn't want to teach. Yeah. So I'm doing what I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to get up in front of people. <laughs> yeah, I already said that. I'm making it clear. Did somebody didn't hear that. <laughs> Luke 17, 20 and 21. Let, let's look at this. I want to, now we're going to move somewhere. Luke 17, 20 and 21. We see something. My JW buddies, they just hate this scripture, but it's in the Bible anyway. There's a lot of people don't like a lot of scriptures in the Bible. I, I kind of like have a lot of fun reading the scriptures that people don't like. Because <laughs> they're in there for a reason, right? Yeah. I always think, well, we only, you know, the Bible is the only book where they take a couple of scriptures on this page and then they turn pages and they only read a couple of scriptures here. You know, what, what if you wrote me a letter and I only read a sentence on this? They're <laughs> <laughs> getting the rest of it, you know. And, I mean, that's the only, the, book in the only book in the world they read that way. Isn't that amazing? I, I just I never figured that out. Well, it's the spirit of error that makes people do that. Yeah. Let me read this out of the Amplified. 1720, asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he replied to them by saying, The kingdom of God does not come with signs to be observed or visible display. Nor will people say, Look, here it is, or see, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, surrounding you. Well, this is kind of powerful. It's pretty powerful right here, right? Now, I've done a word study here when I ran into this book years ago. You know, kingdom means royal. And the D-O-M is abbreviated for dominion. So the royal dominion is within you. Now think about it. You've had this royal dominion. And, and that's within you, each and every person here. There's no respect to person with God. Yeah. You see, that's where we've messed up in Christianity. We platform people. And, and they've made millions of dollars off everybody. Yeah. And uh, so on and so forth. But the idea is that God's in everybody. I, this, see, this is what I want everybody to know. This is the message been going for years. Yeah. Everybody has the power to heal. You have the power to deliver. Yeah. But you don't quite understand it. Our former somewhat founder or president of Campus for Christ for Buku years, Charles Shockley, he had the first healing de deliverance church in America. They wrote a book about Brother Charles. It's called Deliver Us From Evil. These are these guys over here all move, Brother Charles. Deliver Us From Evil. And it was a kingdom church. They preached the kingdom. And so uh, I'll move into a little bit more of that, of what birthed out of that, because you see, Jesus is our example and we're to follow in his footsteps. Everybody getting that? Right. First Peter 1 and 21. He's our example. We're to follow in his footsteps. I mean, you first John 2 6. 
We're to walk even as He walked. We're to walk even as He walked. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. I can go on with these forever. The servant is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. I mean, hello, Luke 6 and 40. People used to ask me, don't you want to be like your dad? I said, absolutely not. I go, I want to be like Jesus. <laughs> as he is, so are we in this world. There's John 4 and 17. Now, why are those scriptures in there for? Yeah. You know? And I remember my old Pentecost, oh, Brother Charles, the 35 years ago, what to be like Jesus? And they laugh at me and I go, only because the Bible says I'm supposed to be. Right. Come, on. Right? Right. Come on, I, I'm not here to teach on, the, on that realm here today, but I'm trying to share you something. He wouldn't leave these examples for us if we weren't able to walk in it. Yeah. Right? In fact, John 14, 12, this was used several times here, I've heard it. If He says, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures has said, right? Ah, no, 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 I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm over in John 7. Let me get over here. <laughs> John 12 and 20. 14 and 12. Okay. I might have to read it. The works that I do. Yeah, he says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go into the Father. Now, that's pretty powerful, right? Now people go, oh, Brother Charles, nobody will do greater works than Jesus. Well, Peter did. He walked down the street and his shadow was healing the people. Right. The Shekinah glory was radiating out of that man. I just did a word study on that again here a couple few months ago. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? He walked down the same places that Jesus went. Let, let me read something to you. John, John 18, 36 and 38. And then I'm going to move into this other, other round of it. John 18, 36. You see, we got some things that we've been taught that we have to get through and get over if we're going to move into the things of God. Jesus answered, My kingdom, kingship, royal power belongs not to this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my followers would have been fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. This world, it has no such origin or source. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Now, wait a minute. Why would he say, you're not of the world even as I am not of the world? Anybody ever got that part? Yeah. Do we have to overcome the world? Do we have to overcome the flesh? And then we overcome the devil. The book of Revelation is written to the overcomer. Over and over again. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I'll be in God, and he will be my son. And so on and so forth. I'm not here to bring that forth, but it's written to the overcomers. And we've got the power to overcome all these things. In the next verse, it says... 37, Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say it. You said it. You speak correctly, for I am a king. Certainly, I am a king. This is why I was born, and for this I come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth is a friend of the truth, who belongs to the truth, hears and listens to me. You see, it said, Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved, Therefore, God shall send them strong delusion that they might believe the lie. You see, that's why we have the spirit of truth is what? To lead and guide us into all truth. All truth. I'm not here to bear witness with all that. I'm going to take you somewhere else. We hear, we see something here. Let, let me go. Let me take you over here to, um, no, help me Jesus. Let, let's go to Ma Matthew 9, 32. Let's look at a little evidence of the kingdom. Matthew 9. 32. Are you ready? Let me back up to 27. Can I do that? <laughs> and when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came up to him, and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes, and he saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. There it is. And their eyes were open. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all the country. Verse 32, And as they went out, behold, they brought to him a man mute and demon-possessed, <laughs> And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke and the multitude marveled, saying, It was never seen like this in Israel. Yeah. 
Think about this. So what did he do? He dealt with the principality and power. He dealt with the spirit that had that person bound. Uh, 30-something years ago, I was in a little warm in town. We had a little Bible study there. I can tell tons of these stories. There was a blind lady there, born and raised in this little town, maybe less than 2,000 people. Uh, 78 years old, Mormon lady, never come to anything but the Mormon church. Came in there, I said, sister, if you'll get out of that chair and you'll come up here, God will open your eyes. She sat there, boy, you could hear a pin drop. Everybody went, woo! I said, sister, if you get out of that chair, You'll come up here, God will open your eyes. She came up there, her eyes were all white and cloudy. I prayed for her eyes, to, she had the prettiest eyes you'd ever want to see. She turned around and she says, you know why God opened my eyes? Wait, what? I have faith. <laughs> <laughs> but what an evangelistic, what an evangelist she was, right? 78, and everybody knew her, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And that, we boomed out the, the walls there, but what I'm trying to say is the idea is that I declared the end from the beginning. Yes, Lee and I were at a meeting there, the homeless lady, she had hit a bed of the car wreck, crushed her knee. Like people said, we hate your religion was their number one statement. We had to open the doors, we're in a building, a garage type thing, and they had to open the doors, we had to get people outside, it was cold. Anyway, Leah goes, how many people want to see a miracle? This lady, she was homeless because she had been in a car wreck and crushed her knee and she couldn't work. And uh, God gave her a brand new knee. Yeah. <clears throat> brand new knee. She was declaring the end from the beginning. Yeah. You see, people that, 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 that'll bring on some people here eventually. You might wake up in the middle of the night and go, hey, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> this is even better. You wake up and go, I got this. There you go. No. And it's not, it's a, you know, if you do what Jesus did, you'll have the same results that he did. This yeah. is what I'm telling you. WWJD, what would Jesus do, right? Come on. You know, you rebuke, you rebuke a blind spirit, a deaf and dumb spirit, yeah. you're going to see results. Right. Yeah. You're going to see results. I'm telling you, it's not just me. This is, this is good news for everybody. You have the, the kingdom is within you. Come on, I want to move into a little bit more of this. I'm going to keep this sweet and short. And then, uh, <laughs> let me jump up here. Well, let me get, keep going. Verse 33. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke in the multitude marvel, saying, It was never like this in all of Israel. But the Pharisee said, He cast out demons by the ruler of demons. There is the Antichrist trying to make the Christ look like the Antichrist. Yeah. I'll let that one float by everybody. Yep. Then Jesus went about all of the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were very weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And he said to his disciples, Harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. 10.1 And when he called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. We get over here to Luke 10, you'll see that he anointed 70 others. Wow. Everybody just wants to look at the 12, but there was a lot of people there. And I'll leave that under. Jump down to verse 7. As you go, preach, saying, I believe this is the commission of the church today. Right. As you preach, go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons freely you have received. So freely give, right? Charge them a lot. Just to get in the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Matthew 24, 14. They, uh, this is, you know, when you read the Word and allow the Word to speak to you in a rhema way, you know, there's scriptures that will birth in your heart. And it's kind of amazing how this works. 24 and 14, it says, And this kingdom, this gospel, the good news of the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Yeah. You don't hear much about the kingdom. Mm. I mean, it burst, but it, it gets shut up a lot. And, and let me do this, 1 Corinthians 4.20. Take another shot here. 1 Corinthians 4.20. I can quote it to you, but I'm going to read it to you. I want everybody to know these are in your Bible too. And it says, And the kingdom of God is not in word, but in what? Word. But in power. 
and power. Now, this royal dominion is within you. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The disciples went everywhere preaching the word and the Lord working with it confirmed the word with what? Signs follow. See, the power of God lies in the word of God. I had a friend of mine 30 years ago, well, I haven't seen anybody baptized. There's a full gospel but Man, he said, there's all kinds of people got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He goes, I haven't seen anybody baptized in the Holy Spirit in a long time at my church. I said, teach on it. Teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I ran into him about three months later. He goes, oh my God, we saw all kinds of people. Yeah, he began to teach and taught out of more. The hunger began to stir and people wanted the desire. God will give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that right? Woohoo! I gotta remember where I was now. Let's go to <laughs> uh, yeah, you, I, want, I think I want to go to 12, Matthew 12. Let's do this. I don't think I've been here yet. Have I? Yeah, we need to be there again. Are we there again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I haven't read this. Now, let, let me let me pick up verse 20, uh, 22, 12 and twenty-two. I haven't been here yet. Then one of the then they then one was brought to him who was demon possessed. Now, what was the demon possession? Blind and mute, yep. and he healed him, so that the blind and mute both spoke and saw, and the multitudes were were amazed, saying, "Could this be the son of David?" Now, when the Pharisees heard this, they said. This fellow does not cast out demons except by Belzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself and brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? Right. And, if a, and if I cast out demons, if I cast out demons by Belzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Now listen to this. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Right. Now we got the kingdom and the Spirit coming together here, right? Yeah. Come on. Come on, think about it. This is it dominion, man? You've got this holy... You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses, right? Yeah. That's actually chapter 1 and verse 8. I think it's 4, about verse 32, 33 of Acts. It says, And great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. Yeah. That witness is a power, and there was a, there was a demonstration yeah. of power there. That's the witness. Yeah. We've turned this witness in. Let me tell you about Jesus. Well, let me just show you Jesus. Hey. Isn't yeah. that right? Come on. Come on, that's where it is. That's what changes things. It's in you. The more you release this from you, the more it'll be easier to release, and the greater the power will get, and the more that'll flow through you. I'm being serious with you. Yeah. Now it says, there's 29. Listen to this. How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. Ooh, he is not with me, he is against me. Yeah. Now see, we, we'll get over here in the keys of the kingdom when Peter receives them and see what Jesus told him. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now there, see, there's a binding and loosing. We, we've got to take these strong. There's a lot of strong men. Let, let me just share this. Oppression. What comes with the spirit of oppression? Anger, yeah. rage, suicide, jealousy. Those are all children of oppression. He's the strong man. It won't do any good to just come against the spirit of anger or of jealousy if I don't go after the strong man. I'm not here to teach on all this, but I'm trying to break you into something that the more you study this, the deeper it gets and the more powerful you will be. You see, we have discerning of spirits. Unclean spirits, foul spirits, spirits of infirmity. Yeah. You know, arthritis is under the under that spirit of infirmity. I'm trying to help you out. And so the idea is that when a, a spirit of infirmity can be in your foot one day, you know, the doctors can't ever find out what's wrong with somebody because that, that's a spirit of infirmity. It's moving all around your body. Yeah, come on. Come on. I, I'm not here to tell you. I'm trying to keep this short and sweet, but I'm trying to, to birth you into this. God will bring you greater and greater revelation into all this. You just need to use what you got, and you'll be amazed how well it works. It, it works. I've watched it for years and years and years. And I'm no special person. I'm no theologian. Okay. <laughs> Amen, brother. Okay, 10 9, Luke 10 9. <laughs> that was your chance. Amen. 10 1. <laughs> Back up to 10 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. 
<coughs> also, and he sent them out two by two <coughs> before his face. I left my water over there. Two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. So here's the 70 others. I like to teach on why he sent them out in twos, but that's another, that's another revelation that take too long. Verse 9, it says, And he healed the sick there, and he said to them, Heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Now where yeah. do we ever get this pray for the sick? He said heal the sick, right? Yeah. Come on. Oh, hello. Yeah. And what, so in whatever city you enter, and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The very dust of your city is clean to me, and get, let's kick it off. Verse 17. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us. How is that? In your name. See, they were using his name. See, well, you know, we, we get a revelation of this and begin to grab a hold of this. Matthew 16. Let me, may I do this stuff flip over here to Matthew 16. 18. I want to read this to you out of the Amplified Bible. Now, Peter gets his commission here. There's a lot of revelation right here in this. In Matthew 16. I've seen people that I've led to Jesus, especially when we were in, in No Limits and stuff, that were only two and a half months old in Jesus, out doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Come on. Yeah. Because they were forever and praying in the Spirit. John G. Lakes was asked, what are your two number one things in your, create, in your miracle ministry? He says, number one, praying in tongues. Hmm. He said, number two, he says, I come against the spirits that have people bound with great anger. Yeah. That's pretty that's pretty simple, huh? Mm -hmm. That's no big deal. And that was back in the 19, early 1900s. 1618. I tell you, you are Peter, Greek, Petros, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, Petra, a huge rock like Gibraltar, he's pointing to himself here, I will build my church. This word church is is uh, is for a body of people. There's seven different usages of the word church in the in the Greek. Seven different usages. There is some of them are ecclesia. He's going to build his church. And now listen to what he says. And the gates of Hades, the powers of the eternal region, infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you lose and declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. Let me go to Philippians 2, 9 and 10. Let's shorten this up here a little bit. I think we're almost, I'm ready to, to finish this up here. Now think about this. I, I think because people don't understand the, the realm Philippians 2, 9 and 10. Let me get there before I start babbling on here. <laughs> the realm of the Spirit, because see, there's some things that are happening. 2, 9 and 10 of uh, Philippians, it says, I'm not even there. <laughs> Wrong book. That's why it's not reading right. Now think about this. It's, Therefore, I'm in the right place. Therefore, because he stops, he stoops so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should, it must bow, yeah. is the way it reads, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. So at the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. Yeah, it's everybody. That's right. That's a three dimensions that name has power in. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? You know, the binding and loosing people don't really quite understand how that works. But the idea of that is when we come against these principalities and powers, and we understand, you know, his, and his name is the Word of God. Yeah. Revelation 19.13. So literally, when I go in Jesus' name, I just do the whole book at the devil. Come on. I can't think of a verse good enough, so I just use the whole Bible. <laughs> What's going to work here, right? Come on. I mean, it works. Yeah. You know, I was just talking about the blood. I used to travel with an evangelist. He had a powerful creative miracle ministry. Been in prison for murder most of his life. Read the Bible, daylight till dark. While he was in there, he was so full of the Holy Ghost. But man, I'll tell you what. He'd tell these people, they just 
I put the warm blood of Jesus on you, man. And they just, wah! <laughs> I never heard anybody use the warm blood of Jesus, but it worked, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> we thought, we could, I could get into all that, man. I'd love to tell some story there, but he was always declaring the end from the beginning in his creative miracle ministry. The fact is that everybody has the power of God is within you. I'm just going to keep this short and sweet. I, I believe that God's got an army in the earth today. You know, and I, you know, and, and this is this is the fact that why do we have a fivefold ministry? The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And who's God going to give this kingdom to? The saints. You're the most feared army. You're the most feared people upon this planet. Because never before on this planet was God in everybody, with everybody, and on everybody. Come on. Jesus said in John 14, 17, yeah, he's up on you, but he's going to soon be within you. Yeah. Everything that God has is within you. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I mean, can, can we get that? Yeah. You know what? Let me, let, me throw, let me just throw this one at you. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. I'm going to try to quit. I know we got... <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown where? In our hearts. So as to beam forth the light for the illumination of the knowledge of the majesty of the glory of God, as it is manifested in the person and is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. And I mean, I did this teaching when Leo was in Missouri here a couple of years ago. I never taught it yet, but I've read wrote it all down anyway another story when God created the earth and he said light be isn't that right man when you're he, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves 4 7 the very next verse and so what happened then he says in our hearts light be into this earthen vessel mm. thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth till it is in heaven man I gotta establish the will of God and the kingdom of God in this earth before I can establish it in this earth Hello. Come on, I'm trying to get you somewhere. I'm trying to take you someplace. It isn't just there for the taking. You don't give, I wouldn't give a, a baby a razor blade to play with. <laughs> Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth be given unto me. Go ye therefore. Well, get a revelation that you're a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Come on. Everything that he had, he gave to you. I'm the light of the world. And he tells us, you're the light of the world. Mm. I'm a son of God. You're a son of God. Come on. My name I give unto you. Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other name. He gave you his name. He gave you his spirit. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Let me read that to you right here. We're 4, 10, and 11. Listen to this. Let me read it to you out of this. King James. Too many words here for me. 2 Corinthians 4, 10, and 11. Oh, you got to wait for me. Don't get out there in front of me now. Let's start reading that. <laughs> 4, 10, 11, it says, For we, <laughs> am I in the right place? Second, oh, I'm in 1 yeah, Corinthians. I, uh, no, you're, uh, I didn't read right. I do that once in a while. 4, 10, it says, Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, the life, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest where? In our body. Come on. In our body. Ooh. Verse 11, it says, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our mortal flesh. Yeah. This is God's desire for you. Come on, get off your blessed assurance. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the kingdom of God is at hand, right? It's right here in this hand. <laughs> wow, come on, get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm being real with the deal. Yeah, let me read you one more 2.5 and then I'm quitting. Ephesians 2.5. I've got to tell you what 2.5 I'm going to, right? Ephesians 2.5. I'm here to edify you. I'm here to build you up. I want to. I hate the devil. He hates me. We agree on something. <laughs> We're in a perfect agreement, you know. But if I can let you stir you up and let you see who you are in Christ Jesus. That you really are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. You really are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Not when they put you in a box and mail you home. Come on, come on. I'm talking in the realm of the Spirit right now. And you know, he, he, he fears you. 
<laughs> Where did I say two five? These are two five. <laughs> I gotta back up. Get this whole now listen to this. It says, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself. He gave us the very life of Christ himself. The same new life. This is resurrection life, man. This isn't just Zoe life. This is resurrection life. The same new life. He didn't have this before. Hello. With which he quickened him. He made him alive. That's resurrection life. For it is by grace his favor and his mercy which you did not deserve. The only religious people think they deserve this. A lot of us even. Wow, I'll just look at myself here. That you are saved, that you are saved and delivered from what? Judgment. See, we're leaving grace. We're moving into judgment. More and more every day. God doesn't do anything all of a sudden. He does it nice and slowly, but we're delivered from judgment. We're saved from the wrath. Romans 5, 9, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10. His wrath that's coming upon this planet is not for us. And I'm not here to teach on that. The plagues, if you study the plagues that hit Egypt, it's the same plagues that are in the book of Revelation. Yep. It never was dark in, in, on Israel's side, was it? No. None of the plagues ever happened to Israel. No. And you are Israel. We send out a thing every day. Nuggets for the remnant. And made partakers of Christ, what? Salvation. Now I'll read this verse 6. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now I'm going to quit there. I could keep going on on this thing forever. <laughs> the idea is that you need to get these scriptures in your heart. Yeah. Come on. Hmm? Isn't that right? Yeah. Come on, you're bought with a price. You're not your own. That doesn't. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Yeah. You know, I talked about, let us hold fast the confession of our faith. What's wrong with you getting up in the morning and going, well, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent you to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year before. Mm -hmm. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and God is with you he said I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you isn't that right some lady called I led her to Jesus years ago and she goes oh, Brother Charles I've been in this bad she'd been practicing all the bad stuff and I said well she goes how does God see me I go he's standing out there right now He's looking for you down the highway there. <laughs> Isn't that right? Come on, who was he looking for? That wayward son that, that took his, his life and went into a party life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he saw him afar off. That's right. Come on, people that have fallen away from God, they, God will bring them right back. There is no unpardonable sin. Yeah. I just want to share that with you. Party. Ooh, Father, we thank you for your kingdom. We thank you for your tremendous word, Father God. We thank you for what you placed inside of each and every one of us. Father, we thank we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the ecclesia, the power may be of you and not of ourselves. Father, we thank you for that mighty name of Jesus. God, at the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. Yes. We'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Father, for this victorious army that you're raising in the earth today. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Father, I thank you. Anoint our ears, anoint our eyes. We seal this word with the blood of Jesus that no weapon fashioned to form against it will prosper. God, you said that they that hear the word and understand it, that not Satan comes immediately to steal it. But we, we break that today. We block it today in Jesus' name and by the blood of Jesus. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for your mighty spirit. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.